now uh, I'll begin our Zoom hui today with a karakia, followed by a mihi, and then I'll hand it over to our first presenter. Kia ora tātou. I'll begin our karakia. Mataru ki te tupua, mataru ki te tawhito, mataru ki te kāhui whetu, mataru ki hunga nui, mataru ki ahunga nui, mataru ki manako nui, mataru ki wānanga nui, e tō mataru ki kiraro rā, whānō, whānō, haramai te toki, haumi e, hui e, tāi ki e. A kā tira, tēnā tātou. Whakawhaiti mai ki tēnei wā, ki tēnei haora, ki tēnei miniti, ki te aha, ki te kōrero mo Matariki. Ko ngā kaipapa o Matariki, kai tēnā whare taonga, kai tēnā whare toi. Nō reira, kia ku rangatira, kai ngā kaitiaki, kai ngā kaimahi, ngā ringa ringa, kai ngā whare taonga, ni ngā whare toi, puta noi te motu, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. A kia ora tātou. Ooh, got more people coming in. Awesome. Hey, it's Paul Tibble here from uh, National Services Te Poirang. Um, actually, the first thing I'll say, um, you know, we know about Matariki. Matariki is a time of reflection. And we remember those who have passed away. And sadly, recently in our team, National Services Te Poirang, we had our colleague, Sole Matua, pass away last week. Uh, we buried her on uh, Tuesday. So, yeah, just an acknowledgement of our colleague, of our friend, uh, of someone who like all of us here in the Zoom, are of service to our communities through the arts, through the care of Tonga. And that is one of the beautiful things of Matariki. We get to remember those who have passed. So I also acknowledge all those of you who have had whānau, colleagues and friends who have deceased over the last year. This is a time for remembrance. And then when it comes to Matariki, we can remember them and then celebrate and look forward to the future. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Hey, I'm going to hand it over to Leroy the Theory from Te Papa. So we've got three groups presenting today. We've got Leroy from Te Papa, we've got Marie and Patricia from Waikato Museum, and we've also got Xian Zhang from Pataka Gallery in Porirua. So actually, Leroy, ka hua te te rākau kōrero ki ākoe, kei takuranga tira, you're on. Ah, tēnā te mihi kia koe, Paora. Ah, me tō mihi. Um, hewe, ah, tēnā tātou katoa. Um, ko wai ahau, ko Leary the Theory tōku ingoa. Um, he uri no Waikato, hengari i tipu ake ahau ki te taui, watu waka Māui, ah, ki whakatū. Um, uh, he noho ana ki te whanganu iātara uh, i naia nei. Um, kei, te, kei te mahi ahau ki te papa, um, um, one of the educators at te papa um, on the learning team. Um, I've got a great team uh, that I work along uh, with a great um, number of different skills and um, yeah experiences that they bring. Um, and so currently, like I'm sure a lot of us, um, within our roles, you know, a big focus at the moment is around Matariki. Uh, and so really fortunate to be able to, to share uh, this afternoon um, just around some of the things that we are doing here at Te Papa, um, kind of some of our focuses and programming that um, we're rolling out for Matariki this year. Um, I will just firstly just um, acknowledge um, Rangi Mātāmua. Rangi has been working closely uh, with us here at Te Papa, so a lot of um, a lot of the fakaro and and kōrero that I may share today um, has been has been passed um, on from Rangi. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge um, him and Living by the Stars. Um, yeah, before I continue on. Uh, but I'm just going to share a bit about Matariki, what it is, and then talk a bit around some of the programming, um, both public programming and education, and then I'll hand over to um, Marie um, to share afterwards. So um, please, throughout um, this, Zoe, if you've got any questions, 
um, or you want to share any thoughts as um, any of us presenters go through, then uh, please do put them into, into the chat. Uh, we will be managing it and checking it as we go. Um, but what is Matariki? Um, so Matariki is it's a cluster of stars. It's not a it's not a constellation. Um, Matariki is um, found in uh, the constellation of Taurus, the bull. Okay, uh, Matariki rises on the the eastern horizon um, in the morning during winter. Okay, um, how many stars? Seven or nine? You know, Keakoto. You know, that's you know we'll share a bit about the the importance of local context okay but um regardless of i think how many stars you recognize i think if we start looking and thinking about the importance of this time of year um some of the ways that we we celebrate and remember um then the number of stars you know isn't in my opinion too much of a concern um yeah so that's just a bit about matariki um Couple of reasons why I think we should celebrate Matariki. Um, firstly, Matauranga Māori. Um, with the uh, announcement of the, the national holiday around Matariki, you know, I, I feel like this is the time where the whole country pauses and acknowledges Matauranga Māori. Um, this time of year, the, the celebration of our new year and, and what that brings, you know, I think it's an, it's an awesome, position for us um, to be in to kind of let Mātauranga Māori be at the forefront of, of a lot of things that we do around this time. Um, it, Matariki is, gives us a sense of identity. Um, it's important to, to not only Māori but you know other um, countries in the Pacific um, and kind of how they acknowledge this time. Um, the national identity you know, um, sorry, the national holiday. Um, you know, this has been a long time, long time coming, and there's some been some people who have been at the forefront of, of kind of establishing this and kind of rebringing Matariki and some of the celebrations back, you know, back to the to the surface and to the forefront. So, um, you know, this is a as an awesome opportunity for us as as museums and galleries to um, to be able to take lead in some of those places or to support. Um, our iwi or communities um, that already are um, doing things within within this time of year. Um, and then the last two, to tie out, and then also the reflection. Um, Matariki really gets us to think about the importance of our env environment um, and how we um, look after that. Um, we, we live by a, a different calendar system. We live by a Gregorian calendar system, you know, that doesn't, doesn't rely on um, our environment, um, our, our sun, our stars, our moons, what's happening, you know, within Te Taio. Um, so it's, a, it's another awesome time for us to kind of reevaluate, reassess, um, and to reflect on not only the year that's been, but also start to think about the future and um, what are our aspirations or what are our commitments um, for the coming year and especially around Te Tai Ao. Um, I just want to briefly touch on three principles. Um, and these three principles are probably um, principles that um, most of us are probably have, have come across. Um, and with the, the launch of the national holiday, um, these kind of have been the principles that underpin how we may celebrate. Um, and so the first one is the remembrance. Um, so Matariki is a time for us to, to remember. Remember those who have, have passed away within the last year. Um, and a lot of celebrations around the remembrance, um, for, for some of us, you know, we, it's the, the whangai te hautapu ceremony in the, in the early morning um, when Matariki rises. It's a time for us to uh, release um, our mate, those who have passed, um, as they may, um, so they may become fetu in the in the sky. The second one is celebrating the present, um, so acknowledging our new year. Um, it's a time to gather together as as whānau, um, and friends, as a community, as an iwi, um, to to celebrate um, the the new year, to celebrate. Um, as well, the year that's been, but also, you know, that we're about to step into to something new, to a new time, um, 
and winter is is a time for us to to be together it's 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 a cold time um you know it's a time where we should really be inside um where it's warm so we're not um getting sick you know some of those practical reasons so um how we do that um you know we may do that in different ways but um the importance of actually celebrating that time of year and then lastly the third one looking to the future um so what are our our hopes and, and aspirations for the year to come. Um, traditionally, you know, a lot of this was around, you know, the pre preparations of, of our mata, of our gardens, you know, what we were going to, um, to, to plant for the year ahead. Um, so kind of just those practical things around um, what are our goals, what are our aspirations as we step into this, into this new year. Uh, now, alongside these three principles, there are there are three themes that um, that also kind of coincide um, with them. Um, and matariki hunga nui, matariki ahunga nui, matariki manoko nui. Um, so, in the karakia that Paula um, recited at the start, um, in the middle there, it talked about these three um, these three themes. Uh, and so, matariki hunga nui refers to the um, the many people of Matariki, um, so it's kind of that gathering of, of people, um, people to, to go home, to be together, to remember their loved ones. Uh, Matariki Ahunga Nui uh, refers to the, uh, the great uh, food piles of Matariki, um, so the, all of the food that we have harvested, that we have uh, stored away, um, leading up to, to Matariki, um, it kind of just talks about that time of year with the feasting when we come together, um, you know, as a, as a whānau, as a community. And then lastly, the Matariki Manako Nui. So Manako uh, refers to our, our wishes and desires. Um, so one of the stars of the Matariki cluster, Hiwe Terangi, you know, is one of the as a star that um, carries our, our our dreams, our hopes. Um, so, um, kind of these three these themes, you know, coincide with these principles of ways that we can celebrate, um, but also kind of in some ways help guide us in how we may choose to to recognize this time of year. Ways to acknowledge and celebrate Matariki. Um, I've put this one as its own um, because I think this is probably one of the most important things that I want to try and get across today. Um, and it's the importance of um, local context. Um, so um, I'm down here in Te Whanganui Atara, Pōneke. Um, and so how we celebrate uh, Matariki here is, is, is going to be different across the country. Um, and so it's important that within our galleries, within our museums, that if, um, if we are wanting to celebrate and acknowledge Matariki, we've got to have, um, we've got to be, be delivering it the local context. What's the local iwi, hapu? What are their stories? What are their traditions? How do they celebrate? Uh, how do they recognize the new year? Um, for some, um, it's not even Matariki, it's Puanga or Puaka. Okay, so, um, you know, I'm sharing a lot on Matariki, but I know for a lot of iwi, you know, they, they actually recognize um, the star puanga. Um, and so I think it's just important um, that we are celebrating and acknowledging um, in a way that's reflecting where we are in, in the country, what um, our rohe is. Um, public programming. Uh, so at Te Papa this year, all of our celebrations are taking place um, from the 24th of June through to the 3rd of July. Um, and public, public programming is probably going to be our biggest um, events and celebrating um, here at Te Papa. Um, as I reflected on the last few years um, since I've been working at Te Papa and being involved in with Matariki, um, but also um, our preparations for this year. Uh, these are just some of the things that um, I, I wanted to talk about. First one being authentic kōrero, accurate mātauranga. This kind of um, carries on from the local, the importance of local context. Um, 
it's important for us to make sure that if we are sharing and acknowledging and welcoming, you know, our manuhiri into our spaces, you know, that we are accurately sharing, you know, the, the knowledge for where we are. Um, there are different variations of the stars, of the maramataka, you know, which uh, lunar phase we celebrate matariki, um, when it rises. Um, so I think as long as we are having engagement with iwi, with where we are, you know, that this authenticity should reflect in, in the practices and the um, programming that we put on for our, for our spaces and our manuhiri. Um, having a theme, I think having a theme is a great way to help guide um, how, we, how we celebrate within our spaces. Um, for us, a lot of um, our celebrations is actually um, through the days, each days of the week, we are actually kind of basing it on one of the stars. Um, so, um, you know, I think the, the, the last weekend is, is Waiti Waita. Okay, and Hiwe Tirangi. So um, that's kind of a way that we're structuring how we're celebrating within our museum is by um, choosing a star each day and what we um, have on display, what public programming we're doing reflects that star. Um, working with Iwi, I've, I've talked about the importance of that. Um, important to engage with community groups. Um, so collectives, different... Um, you know, groups within your communities who may specialize in, in certain areas. For us, we're bringing in some, um, some Taonga Puro artists um, to have throughout the week. Um, we've got Toi Tukuiho, a number of different um, Ote artists who are coming in, um, as well as engagement from the Pacifica community as well. Um, so I'm sure there's a lots of different community groups within our own regions. Um, you know that we that we can reach out to um and it all just brings that back to that local that local context but also um utilizing and supporting you know who we have within our own our own spaces um who is our who is your audience you know um is it children is it families is it is it komatua is is different days reflecting who your audience is um i think if we're looking at the beginning of programming and and deciding on on what we want to do you know it's always a great place to start with you know who's our audience who are we trying to reach and capture um and then accurate alignment to matariki um this one is kind of a cheeky one that i've chucked in um and i think from some of my observations um over the last few years um you know just because um, just because it's Māori doesn't necessarily mean it's Matariki. Um, and so I think it's, um, um, especially with the national holiday um, and kind of the recognition and the time that's going to be um, put into to Matariki, um, you know, we want to be um, doing things that align with, with that time of year, um, whether it's to do with the season, um, what's happening outside, into Taiao, I think, um, yeah, if we can acknowledge the importance of Matariki and the significance of it and what's kind of involved and we can do around that time, you know, I think um, for all of us, you know, we're in a great place to, to deliver and offer some really awesome things. Um, this is just a collection of photos of both previous and um, previous years of our celebrations at Matariki, but also some of the things we're going to be doing this year. Um, so we've got the Homanu Collective coming in for Tango Puro. Um, we've got some people who's going to be coming to do Rongoa. Um, every year at Te Papa, we, um, we have Taikura Kapaka. Um, so um, that, that'll be another thing that will be um, happening during our celebrations. Um, across social media. Um, we've got a lot of kids activities and kids Fano days um, planned. So um, we're really reaching out to our, our younger audience, um, our Taitamariki Fano, um, to offer and put on um, things for them to be part of as well. Uh, and we've also got the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra coming in for one of the um, one of our days. Um, and they are 
um, they've scheduled and created their um, performance around a particular a particular star. Um, so kind of the idea is that what they play on that day reflects um, a certain star that we are recognizing that day. Um, yeah. Lastly, education program. So this is my space. Um, this is what um, I've been working on. Um, along the side there, I've just put in some of the key questions that we've thought about this year for our programming. Um, we are delivering to um, ECE, Kohanga Reo, uh, mainstream schools and Kura of Māori. Uh, and these are some of the questions that um, kind of underpin all of our programs as a basis of, of where to start and to um, what to deliver on. Um, we've also created a lot of resources um, and reviewed some of our, um, our current resources and um, videos that we have on our website um, and actually have updated some of those. Um, so some of you may be familiar with our How to Find Matariki video. Um, so we've recently just um, re refreshed that video. Um, so that's just live on our website as of today. Um, so yeah, just thinking about what you know, and it's a question I think, you know, that we probably ask ourselves as, museum, as museums and galleries is what, what do we offer that schools don't? Um, we're quite fortunate, I guess, to have a lot of taonga and, and different works that we have access to and maybe on our floors as display, you know, that are different to what schools can provide. Um, so a lot of our programming just in general is, is how do we utilize those spaces? How do we utilize our taonga um, to be able to talk about particular themes, messages. Um, and so that's that's kind of what we're doing this year. We're quite fortunate that we've um, been able to put in a temporary experience on the floor at Te Papa, um, just for the just for our celebrations of Matariki. Um, so that's going to be um, hugely utilized by us as education. Uh, we have a designated space to be able to deliver programs um, and to to share with our um, with our tawira who come in um, around some of these questions and um, thoughts around matariki. Um, I'm just going to finish with this slide. This, not that. Um, matariki, the picture on the left is, is how we see matariki. Okay, the picture on the right is how um, Northern Hemisphere sees matariki. Um, so little things like that. We were called out last year actually um, because we had the, the picture around the wrong way. Um, but it's, <laughs> it's little things, it's little things like that uh, that I think are important um, that as we learn more about Matariki, you know, accurately displaying and sharing, um, you know, what it is and what it is not. Um, matariki is not a time to have fireworks. Um, I'm just going to put that out there. Um, but that's, that's kind of, um, what I just wanted to share on, and I'm going to pass over to, to Marie, um, Patricia soon. Um, but please, if you have any questions, um, please put them in the chat. Um, it'd be great to hear if anybody would like to share ways that they are celebrating, acknowledging Matariki within their spaces. Um, or if there are people that may not be sure on, on how to, to start or where to start, um, then there are a number of, of us here that would, would love to be able to support and reach out um, in, in whatever way that we can. So tēnā tātou katoa, um, thank you for your time and I'm going to pass to Paura. Hey, thank you so much. Hey, nāmi hikia, where are you? Hey, I'm actually going to pātou because I just put in the chat just a link to the Te Papa um, you know, that page you're talking about with all the stuff, the resources. Can everyone in this, like can anyone can access those resources that you've got there online? Yep. Oh, yeah. yep. And we've got a number of um, new new resources that are still yet to go up. Um, but yeah, so there'll be a lot more um, resources and links on our website that'll start to get populated over the next couple of days. Um, but yeah, it's all free for anybody to access. Hey, thank you so much, Leroy. I'm here, Kiawe. We're not any other questions from the floor or from out there in uh, Zoom land or Leroy before? Okay. 
curious about why no fireworks. Local community organising <laughs> festival was looking at laser lights. Kill your room. I'll, I'll share my whakaro on it. Um, I, I, I believe Matariki is a time for us to, to, be looking, to be looking up, to be looking at the stars. Um, and fireworks, you know, um, light pollution, you know, that's a, that's a huge one. You know, it, it takes away, you know, what we see in the sky. We can't see the stars. Um, it's also bad for the environment. Okay, um, you know, all of whatever's released in those fireworks then falls back into our, um, into our oceans, onto our land. Um, so I think um, it's, it doesn't sit well with me that we, we re, um, do fireworks at this time of year. And I think the biggest, the biggest reason for me is the effect that it has on our environments. Um, mm. That's just my fakato. Happy for anyone else to share. Hey, thanks, Leroy. Thanks for the avocado. I guess uh, yeah, for all of us pet lovers, hey, it's not a good time for our pets in terms of fireworks. But if it's just one occasion, I guess, yeah. Well, I should see. I'm going to um, hand over to Marie and Patricia. Hey, Homer. Hey, Homer. Oh, just before you go, I just got another one. Okay. We're a small museum and have lots of classes in to learn about Puaka Matariki. We have some activities, but I'm mainly looking to support local iwi with their activity. Oh, awesome. That's, that's <coughs> pretty much. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Kili. I mean, hey, Marie. Tina Koto Katoa, I'm Patricia Gonzalez. I'm the Public Programs Coordinator for Waikato Museum Te Paratanga o Waikato. Kia ora koutou, nā mihi nui ki a koutou, ko Marie Mills Takawingoa, ko Ngāti Tuwhare Toa Hau, ko Pautiaki Whakataki ki Te Whare Taonga Waikato. I work here as in a fabulous job as the mana whenua curator, and we are pleased to be with you today. So um, if we can share our screen. So we're just going to talk to you about some of our strategies for um, developing a Matariki programme. So I think perhaps the most important advice that we can give you is not to go it alone. Um, you should look to your region and see if you can find an umbrella organization and try and become an active member in it. Um, with this being the first uh, public holiday, there are going to be many organizations that are be wanting to develop some kind of program to mark this time of year. But before you go ahead and dive in head first, maybe pause and find out what already exists in your region. See if you can search out other organizations that are working in this space and try and explore ways that you can work together. Um, we're an active member of, of the Matarikiki Waikato Working Group, and we have been since the first Matarikiki Waikato celebrations began in 2009. Every public programs coordinator at the museum has sat as a member of this working group and the ROPU brings together organizations that deliver Matariki events in the areas, in the areas of art, music, environment, and education, and in health and well-being. So this is um, Matariki Ki Wākato is, if you like, managed by this umbrella organization. It's a um, charitable trust called Te Uhu Whakaita, and it's independent and Māori led. So members of this, um, I'm a member of the trust and have been since I joined um, Te Whare Taonga Waikato in 2017. And what we do is we try and set a festival. Oh, apologies. You have a problem with the, the internet there, connection with Marie and uh, Patricia, the Waikato Museum. See if we can get them back in. There's some good stuff here, isn't it? Hmm. Shivers. Okay, Vic, I'm wondering if we should. Oh, I'm wondering if we should just go to share now, and then. If you don't mind, Ewa, then we can come back to these guys. They'll probably have to jump out and then come back in. Okay. Um, I don't mind to fill up this uh, little time gap. So, because um, I'm, I'm not preparing oh, as... Okay, here you go. You're back. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, we just dropped off um, for a moment there. But we were just saying that the museum, like um, 
um, like you were saying before, Leroy, the museum plays a big role in Matariki here in the Waikato too. We we deliver what's called a signature event and have done since Matariki was um, celebrated here in the city. And that means when you're a signature event, you're actually supported financially by the umbrella organisation and uh, make sure that your event is free. So being part of an umbrella organisation, it brings a whole host of benefits. Um, umbrella organizations, for example, they can help with communications and marketing, they can pro promote your event to an audience that you wouldn't otherwise be able to reach, provide social media on the day to encourage further visitation, and they can even commit funds to um, shared needs like hiring in a professional photographer, because in the end, you're all working collectively towards the same goal. So our next tip for planning a public program or a school event is to know your audience. The kind of visitors we get at our Matariki events, they're usually people who want to learn about the culture. So these are new community, new community members, people who just recently migrated to New Zealand. They're keen to learn about Maori culture and Matariki is an accessible way for them to do this. New Year is celebrated in some shape and, or form across countries all over the world. And a wide range of cultures have stories that um, talk about the cluster of stars that we know here as Matariki. So because the rise of Pleiades is shared by many nations across the Pacific Rim, Matariki is easily relatable and that actually helps build cohesion. <laughs> as you can see from some of the picture, pictures that we've got on the screen, we structure a program so that it's not all passive one-way engagement. We always try and build in interactive sessions because it's while you're sitting and you're making or you're creating or through a shared experience with some stranger that you can have conversations about meaning and symbolism and significance. It's, it's an easy way to start those kinds of conversations. So a lot of forward planning goes into preparing for Matariki. And we're, I mean, one of the great things about being in the museum is we're able to forward plan our programs and align them to exhibitions. So I know that um, Xian's going to talk about the art gallery sector, but being a, a Waikato Museum is a museum and art gallery, so we have a massive contemporary uh, Māori exhibition coming up called Toya's Rungoa, and it helps us set up the um, programme for Matariki this year. So... Good pressure, Glenn, eh? Those sorts of is really important. Um, public art programs as well, like Patricia's team and the education team's already aware and over the matauranga content of the exhibition. And so in this case, for example, we've um, we've looked at um, compressing the pro program. Sorry, we were, um, you must have jumped one forward off. I'm just on here. Okay, so we'll just get to it. Sorry, excuse me for a moment. So this year, um, we're offering an extended program that runs across the day in relation to the changes given to us by Level or you know, Orange and COVID and enabling us to actually bring our people back um, into the museum in close-up interactive ways. And we're celebrating um, Matariki from a, the perspective of Toi is Rungoa. And why we're doing that is that the impact of being, being isolated and being unwell, we've noticed, you know, that in the recent recent times, our museum has been had a wave of new, um, I guess, visitation, waves of visitation, and people are happy to be gathering together and to learn and to learn. And our exhibition toy is Rungoa is a fourteen contemporary artists that celebrate well-being and, and the relationship that it has to creative practice. And when we are a, a lot. Of those artists are looking at ways, um, Leroy, we're talking about in, for Matariki, for example, looking at the um, implications of being dis disrupted from our tatayo, from our environment, um, looking at the relationship we have with kai and with the kumara. So these artists are exploring these aspects, if you like, of the mātauran around Matariki in terms of their own creative practice and their well being, their sense of well being. So we've used the exhibition toy as Rungoa to build our Matariki program this year. And they've been very generous to artists because they are committed to the Matauranga of Matariki and the Maramataka. And all of the artists that make work um, are saying to us, it's not a, you know, I, I make and therefore I feel well. It is toy as Rungoa as a statement. 
creative practice is well-being and by creating we may be honoring our those that are past it might be a momahara act it might be an act of remembrance or it might be about a projection for the future so those those are um, things that are embedded in this exhibition that we can pull out and use for the um, public program and the education program so you know toy is a manifestation of cultural identity and it's used to interpret and disseminate knowledge and the simplest equivalent in English language is art, but obviously um, this is a word that's got so much meaning and resonance in Rungawa throughout our own traditional or customary Māori world, you know, is about that physical and spiritual balance through attributes of the natural world. And these are the themes that are um, very important to communicate with Matariki. So as you can see with our um, programme, some of the artists that are exhibiting have offered to run interactive workshops across the day. And we've also got um, some of our community groups involved as well. So we, we thought we'd just sum up with some practical tips for you that we've learned over the last few years of delivering Matariki programmes. One of those practical tips is to plan ahead and to plan as much as you can. Decide which activity is going to take place in which space. Think ahead. Um, resourcing might have to be getting days ahead, a week ahead even. Weavers will have to harvest, deliver the harakiki. We freeze the flax before it's used in any of our gallery spaces. These kinds of things have to be taken into consideration. You might have one activity where you'll need the PA system and microphones, and then another session that's taking place later in the day, which will require that you move the PA system to another venue. If you want to, you could encourage pre-registration to help you manage visitor numbers. And there are forums that will help you do this. Here at the museum, we use Eventbrite, which allows you to create events that are free, but ticketed, so you can keep track of numbers. And all of this, you can keep a handle on by creating a run sheet and including contact details of the people that are going to be involved in your event. It's also important to begin the day and to set that premise at the start. So we always begin with karakia and waiata. And even if there aren't very many people in the museum just yet, you know, just before opening, all of the participants who are there, whether it's people that are actually delivering uh, um, interactive workshops or and our staff, we all gather on our marae atia and we do that karakia in the setup. So it's important to set that kaupapa up and talk about what you're delivering in your museum that day and why. And this is um this this enables, I think, us to be covered in a sense. And usually if you do this well, things go well. Another handy tip, prepare for an onslaught. Um, prepare so you've got enough materials for the number of people that you're expecting and more. Um, ask staff if you can to get involved, educators, front of house team, all of them can help you generate resources. Now, if you're going to be developing children's activities, our advice is to make it simple and easy, something that doesn't require too much adult supervision throughout the day. You want straightforward, creative tasks that can be accomplished by even the tiniest hands. And you'll need to be a little flexible with the output. Sometimes people don't want to leave behind what they've created so that can be part of your collaborative display. They'll want to take it home. Just go with the flow. The important thing is that visitors have a good experience. They've shared time with family and friends and they've gone away having learned something new. So Manaki Tanga is also really important. At Waikato Museum, one of the things that we've committed to is to show this through kai, which is, as we've heard, is appropriate during Matariki. So we build a relationship with all of the people that deliver, um, as I say, that are part of the day, and, and they come up um, and we, we provide kai for lunch, a shared lunch, and that is given to everybody who's involved, whether it's staff or our guests, not the general public, but the guests who have committed to the program. And it builds whakawhanaungatanga, and it builds a sense of community around Matariki, and these people come back, which is what you want as well. Lastly, don't just view your Matariki program as a one-off event. Lira has already talked about that. Um, use your event as a forum to work with local, local artists, local experts, local groups, because developing a public program together is a great way to build lasting relationships with community groups and intergenerational groups. And the women that are featured here, um, they're women we've worked with uh, for the last four years. They belong to the weaving group 
Te Ropo Aroha ki te Raranga, and they are some of our staunchest, most loyal supporters and partners. In the midst of a global pandemic, when most performers and speakers worried about holding live face-to-face -face events, and justifiably so, our Raranga group stood by us and worked with us to deliver in-person weaving demonstrations, and that's commitment, and they stand by us as faithfully as we do them. So we just wanted to say that this isn't really a blueprint for all Matariki programming. You might have some other some other strategies of your own, but our experience has taught us that these are the things that work for us. Yeah, so just to recap, work with an umbrella organization if you can, work with iwi, understand what your audience wants, plan ahead, set the kaupapa, keep it simple, be flexible, show manaki tanga, and work with local to build lasting relationships. Namahinui. Hey, tēnā kōrua. Hey, Patricia kōrua kō Marie. Hey, but you've actually done my job for me. I don't actually need to go out into the community and do any work anymore. Because you've actually <laughs> advised me on how to do it. Solved all my problems. Kia ora, Homa. Hey, thanks for that. It's really amazing advice. I guess, you know, there's on there's big levels, national level, te whapa. Then there's Waikato. You guys have done an amazing job. And uh, next we've got Shin Jang. Yeah, what? Oh, I'm quite um, under pressure of that. The the two before me are well done. Um, well, I've been enrolled, committed to do a uh, contribute a small koriru uh, at the very last minute. So if, um, excuse me, I've got no um, presentation brief, but I'm just going to over all um, the programs we've been developed in Pataka. Uh, as my role as a, pu a public program, we are working on a very um, small team. So for the first year, we quite relied um, to tightly work with the council together uh, to be under the arena, um, but highlighted the, our museum um, culture over here. So um, we've got a few of the um, programs we've been recently just um, penciled down. So I would like to share about, we um, we quite focus on a few of the kaupapa, as we all know that, um, so Matliki would be a good opportunity that we need to focus on whanau's well-beings and gathering together in Manaki Tanga and our Tangata Whenua as well. Um, and so for us, we are the, um, like we, we've got the Fetitila exhibition current, um, the Finua um, exhibition, which um, are host holding with um, Ngati Toa. Uh, so for this program, whenever we have any chance we could, we will bring up our iwi host to let them do the storytelling about their iwi. Um, and luckily since this year, we've got the new iwi host who um, she is the Bagnin's granddaughter, um, who she is uh, Ngati Toa as well. So she will be on site um, to organize, like we will have three sessions each day from the Friday to Saturday. And the, um, the Iwe host will um, on the ground and to bring the stories and guide uh, the visitors who enroll first um, in advance to come to um, see this e exhibition. So that's our very important part of um, storytelling of our local iwis. Um, it is the iwi host for Fetitila tour. Um, and the second one, um, because given that we have a really deeply relationship with um, Patricia Grace and their whole whanau's families, and we are quite proudly to um, have this opportunity, always get to work with um, like Patricia Gray stories and um, also Kohai Grace will have her, um, her, her artwork. It's going to be the first time we will um, represent her, her artwork, her weaving on our light box, but light box, but it's an installation out of Pataka. Um, also, it's part of the Pulirua City's um, public art. And um, as this relationship, we invited a um, Taki, Takiula, Takirula production, which they're making the bilingual um, children's um, play. And so 
they will have like um, um, the the theaters players they come in to do the Patricia story um, storytelling um, the Kuila and spiders, which would be quite a lot of fun to attract a lot of the kids just surrounding um, of on the corner and have a bit of cozy place and have a, 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 a the stories to to tell for several sessions. That's the picture we can draw on the ground. We can see that. Um, and um, we also want to uh, have the opportunity for the local uh, crafters. So um, we we invited the our local like iwi um, weaving group. So we will have a, a workshop. Uh, it's called uh, Let's Fatu. So yeah, that's a that's like a a workshop to display the weaving process as well as that they give them the opportunity for the visitors when they have the questions or interest to approach our weavers that they can have the sharing moment um, and then we also have a as we it's going to be our last chance to promote uh, Lisa Rihanna's um, show Normans of the Sea um, we're really proud of this exhibition. It's uh, quite intensive and um, a, a, a fantastic storytelling of that. Um, and it's related with the um, festival of um, Aotearoa, Aotearoa or festival. And unfortunately, because of the COVID lockdown, uh, most of the time, like predominantly of the time, this show didn't have in large, um, didn't have large exposure. So we're gonna take this chance to do the last go. Uh, we will have our curator uh, on site. So the visitors can come and enroll and um, we will have the curatorial tour um, to over all these galleries and, and to tell the stories. Um, well, the last one, it is the, uh, it's it's kind of the the program we're trying to highlight it with the relationship the re relationship with the local communities. Um, so we we always consistently have the good relationship with the Wanagas um, who resident in Polura. One of them is the uh, Te Aotearoa Te Aotearoa or Wanaga, and another one is Petitila um, Wanaga. So this time we will bring the um, Te Aotearoa Wanaga to come over here and have their Matliki event booth. Um, and they have their, we were more like facilitating them to um, have a space to, on behalf of us, telling the story of what Matliki is with their um, current video. And then they will have the teachers on site and making the stars with the children. Um, and maybe our kids can, you know, write down the wish, um, for the next year, and that's a that's a kind of the interaction um, session. Um, and however, we've got more programs we developed, but we didn't make it this year, such as Rongoa. I've heard um, like Waikato and Tapapa that will have that session, and we are also aware of that it's a very important um, kaupapa for the Matliki, but we will get there next year. Um, yeah, and um, like um, Puru Tonga, also that's part of the session we won and essentially we won it. And ultimately, I think we're going to have them next year with learning from the whole museum sectors, uh, our partners who they're doing. Uh, and together, I believe we can have a, a great and great, um, better and better Matiliki celebration um, for next time. Kapai, thank you. Oh, hey, thank you so much, Shinja. That was, yeah. So, like, you see, you see there wasn't going to be much there, but there was lots in there. I got lots. Um, actually, one of the things I got out of it also was, um, you know, with the Elisa Rehane exhibition, in terms of the impact of, you know, we talked about uh, Toya's Rongwa, but the impact of COVID, of a pandemic in this time. Mm. Like, um, because I guess one of my questions is to all of you, in terms of, so, I don't know, outbreaks, or just how do we deal with, like, you know, Having created these events or this caper during a time of a pandemic. Ideas. It, it's very tricky and very challenge. Um, and we are holding. I mean, for, for I'm speaking for myself. The row I actually land in the row during the middle of the COVID. So um, the the first show we I get to participate is the Sandy Asset. Uh, it was very challenge because 
yeah, we, as we can see, we, we made it. But um, behind that was a lot of pain and tears. Um, so we kind of put, I kind of put my expectation as like, we try what we can and we stand by with what's going to happen for the next day. It's going to be cancellation or postponed. We just, um, as long as we could make ourselves feel, be ready. Um, that's the best estate we can have. Um, but always keep quite optimistic for here we are, the post-COVID, and we can do more. Mm. Sure. Uh, actually, I think you're right. It's actually, we're talking about manakitanga and looking after our audiences, eh? So they're thinking about being really clear, actually, if you can't do it on that day, okay, or yeah. sure. Kia ora. I think um, for us, you know, it's really made us think about the way that we do things. So, for example, I'll give you an example. When we open an exhibition and we've had the artist talk or the um, a curator talk, we've realised we really need to film these events, you know, cap capture them because we may end up, have, you know, we may end up having to use that footage later on because the exhibition is closed to try and, to the public to try and generate another layer of interest. So. I think we've definitely, and the same with our Matariki Festival, uh, Te Ohu Whakaita, um, uh, faced all its funders in the last two years and said, look, we've got this money for you and we aren't, aren't able to host the festival. Can we use it to give our um, website some uh, rebuild so that we can actually deliver this festival online in the future? So, you know, we've all had to future-proof the way we work because this jolly thing doesn't look like it's going away. Thank you so much, Mary. Yeah, I might just might just jump on on that too. It's a, a thought that we've also been thinking around, especially the recording of uh, and capturing some of these things that we're we're doing. Um, as as we we do recognize kind of that you know COVID, what what could happen? Could you know we could we could drop back to red or whatever it is, you know, and, um, you know, we'd have to limit a lot of our, a lot of our numbers or even postpone or cancel some of our things. I remember at the end of last year um, when we were pretty heavily planning some of our things, we, we had planned for those, um, those limitations. And um, obviously um, start of this year, you know, those have eased off. Um, so, you know, their thoughts that we are, uh, are keeping in mind with, with all of our things that we are doing that if we have to you know can we can we deliver this virtually online or, or do we have to postpone um, but capturing a lot of the digital content and being able to display it you know later you know that's definitely what we're going to be doing a lot of this year um, even some of our panel discussions and and kind of lectures that we're, we're doing um, they're going to be pre-recorded um, just just in case but also just for a number of different reasons so yeah we're definitely on the same the same page as as the others hey, Wama. hey um i think that's us for today but just thank you so much to our presenters there's a, there's so many different ideas this has been recorded so we can access this again in the future if you need to and actually just all the different people in here i guess there'll be small museums big museums Hey, we're talking about like to Papa's National, we get public funding. But actually, all these other different uh, levels that we're working on, and what you guys are all doing, making a difference for the new public holiday for Matariki to celebrate it. Because the key thing I got from was um, they're keeping it local and using like um, Sian just talked about using Pack Race and her family, all artists, um, and just um, thinking about um, geez, hey, seven stars, nine stars. Well, today I saw 41 stars on our Zoom week. It was just a real privilege to work with you all and uh, listen to our presenters who did a wonderful job. So I'm going to close this off with a karakia. If you've got any questions, feel free to email us. We'll send out the link to the video. Uh, the karakia I'm going to be using is one that um, one of our colleagues, Lee J, um, created. And this karakia is a way of uh, helping our colleagues at Te Papa pronounce Matariki correctly. So... Um, just want to say to all the whānau here, to all of us who have uh, joined in today's kōrero, uh, thank you very much for attending. Nā mihi kia koutou katoa, kai te whāia tōna, ki te ui tō kanohi, e kokinga mahara ki tātou, kai te hokianga, ki te nōta.
Koino, Kurino, Tata Pare, Tinapota, Tinapota, Tena Tataka Tua, Krakia, Matariki Tutu, Matariki Tafito, Matariki Kahui Petu, Matariki Hunga Nui, Matariki Ahunga Nui, Matariki Manako Nui, Eto Matariki Kirarura, Fano, Fano, Haramite Toki, Haimi, Huye, Taiki, Eoma, we can email you the Krakia, Kurakota, Noramai.